All right, time for a spelling test. Wow, it's been a while since we had a spelling test, isn't it? I can't remember the last time we had a spelling test, but it's your lucky day, actually. It's never a lucky day when you have a test, right? Maybe it's the worst day. Today is the worst day for you, but uh, hopefully you learned some vocabulary today um, in this test. So what I want you to do is I, I want you to get out a piece of paper, okay, and a pencil, and I want you to keep track of how many of these you get right and how many wrong. Now these are, are really hard words. So <laughs> if you even get one or two right, you're doing pretty good, okay? So so don't be too hard on yourself. Even, I think even most native English speakers might really struggle with these. Okay, so are you ready for the first question? I'm just gonna, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you the word. I'm gonna talk a little bit about it. And then uh, while I'm talking, you can think about how to spell it, okay? So our first word is debris. Debris, look at all this debris. Do you know what debris is? Debris, well, in this case, you know, we could use the word rubble. You know, imagine if uh, if a building gets demolished. You know how they, sometimes old buildings, they uh, they demolish the buildings. They, they plant explosives in the building and then they press a button and the whole building collapses, right? Uh, that's called, that's called a, a demolition. You're, you're demolishing the building. Okay, so after that, you know, there, there's just gonna be debris everywhere. Okay, so debris. Now, uh, debris, you know, we could also call this debris. Okay, look at all that debris there on the ground. So in this case, uh, the word debris sort of means like rubbish or trash. Just like, it's it's just sort of a mess, right? Look at all that debris. It doesn't look good. Okay, so so debris is sort of a, sort of a negative thing. It just, it looks, it looks bad. It's sort of the opposite of, of neat and tidy. Right. If if something is neat and tidy, then it's good. <laughs> if there's a lot of debris everywhere, then it's it's bad. Okay. So, are you ready for the word? It's a hard word. There's a silent. <laughs> well, I, I shouldn't give away the the next few words, but but well, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll give you a hint. Okay. Some of these words have silent letters. Okay. So look at this. Debris. 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 Look at this silent s. Debris. Hmm. Did you get it right? Debris. We don't say the S, we just say, we say debris. Debris. Okay, so so that's a hard one. Um, okay, let's go to the next one. The next one, <laughs> this is also pretty hard. The next one is draft. Draft. Okay, so look at this beer. Okay, this beer is uh, is not from a bottle. Okay, it's, it's not from a can. It's, this is called draft beer. Okay, look at this thing. You know, if you if you go to a a bar or a pub, you know, you if you order beer, they're gonna serve it to you like this, um, beer from draft. So so the word uh, draft sort of means um, you know beer on tap. You know that thing that thing that the the bartender is going to sort of sort of you know pour the beer from the tap. Okay, so so that's called draft beer. Now for this one, I want you to <laughs> yeah, I'm going to give you a clue on how to spell this. Okay, I want you to imagine you're going to a British pub. Okay, either here in Canada or the U.S. or or over in England or Ireland, an Irish pub. Or, you're you're going to a pub. Okay, you're not going to a bar. That's an important clue on how to spell this word. Okay, so so the word is draft. Are you ready? You ready for draft? Draft. Man, that's a hard one, isn't it? Draft. <laughs> Look at that, the G-H. Drought. It's, it's, it's like drought. It's, it's like the word, it's sort of like the word drought, right? Draft. Sometimes the G-H, I don't know why. You know, so, sometimes it can be pronounced with the F sound, like the word laugh, for example. Laughter, laugh. You know, that's spelled G-H. So again, here, drought, you know, it, it looks, you know, if for, for, for an English learner to know that this word is pronounced draft, that's just, that's just so unreasonable. You know, if, if you didn't know this, if you would pronounce this word like draught, draught or drought, yeah, you know, I, I don't know. I feel so bad for, for English learners because English spelling is just a nightmare. It's just a nightmare, okay? So draft, draft. Now, the hint I gave you or the clue about the British pub 
is, uh, is this is the British way to spell it. Okay, so if you go to a pub here in Canada, I think they're going to spell it this way because this is the British way to spell it. Now, the North American way to spell it is this. So if you go to a bar, right here, here in like Canada and the US, um, we have pubs, but a pub is sort of like a British thing, you know, they might, if you go to a pub here in, in, in Calgary, I know there's a few Irish pubs, you know, they're going to serve, you, you can go there to order like um, beer like Guinness, for example, you know, they're, they're going to have Guinness on tap, okay, so you can order a draft beer, you can order draft beer, and it's going to be like beer from the UK, it's going to be like, like, I don't, Guinness, um, what other beers do they have in, in, uh, in sort of, that area of the world, like Europe, you know, pubs are sort of more um, thought of as like European things. And, and a bar is like a typical Canadian or American. It, it's basically the same thing, just a, a bit of a different feel, a different atmosphere. Okay, so in Canada and the US, just remember, it's probably going to be spelled this way if you go to a bar. But if you go to a pub here in Canada, it might might be spelled like this, but I think it might be spelled with a GH. Okay, so that's uh, that's your your culture, your your different spelling uh, tip for today. Okay, the next word is minuscule. Minuscule. Wow, do you know what uh, minuscule means? Well, minuscule means tiny, just really small. Okay, so if something is really tiny, you can say it's minuscule. Okay, look at this ladybug on this plant here right? A plant is big. You know, let's imagine a, a ladybug is on like a tree, right? The tree is big, but the ladybug is just minuscule, minuscule. You ready? I think the next slide is, uh, is the spelling of the word. So if you're not ready, pause it because I'm going to tell you how to spell the word minuscule, minuscule. Look at that, minuscule, minuscule. We, this U is so weird. You know, when we, when we pronounce this word, we say minuscule, minuscule. So you'd think it would be an I, minuscule, or at least an E, you know, minuscule. Or min, you know, like a, very often unstressed syllables sort of turn into the schwa sound. Like this, the stress in this one is minuscule, right? Right, the stress is on the first syllable, minuscule, minuscule. So this is sort of like a, a schwa sound. But but it, it when I say it and when I hear other people say it, it sounds a lot more like an I, minuscule, but it's it's a U. I would not, you know, I would not guess that if, if I were, you know, I don't know, I might have gotten some of these wrong. This is probably one of the words that I would have gotten wrong. Okay, a U, minuscule. Man, that's hard. How about you? Did you get it right or did you get it wrong? Okay, the next word is paraphernalia. Paraphernalia. Do you know what paraphernalia means? Paraphernalia just sort of means stuff, things that are sort of related to a certain activity. Okay, so I'll give you an example. Let's say you're going camping. Okay, you want to pack all your camping stuff into your car. Okay, look at all this camping stuff. We have a tent, binoculars, a sleeping bag, a map, a thermos, a compass, and a mug. Okay, so you could call this stuff camping paraphernalia. Just camp, right? The main thing, the thing we're talking about is camping. And then all the stuff that's sort of related to that main thing can be called paraphernalia. Okay, so let's say you're packing all this stuff into your car and you get a call from your mom. You can say, hey, mom, I'm just uh, just packing all my camping paraphernalia into my car. Okay, so paraphernalia. You ready? Oh, no, I forgot. There's another example. Okay, so here's an iPhone. Okay, look at this iPhone. Well, what's in this box? What do you think is in there? Well, it's just going to be paraphernalia. Some, some paraphernalia relating to this, right? This is the main thing, the iPhone. Right, but in that box, there's probably going to be like a, a charging brick and a, a charging cable, uh, maybe a SIM tool. You know those little those little tools that you use to take out your SIM card. That's those are called SIM tools. Okay, so there's probably a SIM tool in there. Just a bunch of stuff relating to your iPhone. Okay, so that's just a bunch of of paraphernalia. iPhone paraphernalia. You ready? Well, ready or not, here we come. Paraphernalia. Look at that, paraphernalia. There's an R here. Did you guess there would be an R here? That's so crazy. Parafer, paraphernalia. 
man, an R, paraphernalia. We don't say this R. Okay, so this R is silent. When, At least when I say it, when most people I know say it, they say paraphernalia, paraphernalia, not paraphernalia. So if you want to spell this word correctly, just repeat this pronunciation. Repeat the wrong pronunciation in your mind a few times. Paraphernalia, paraphernalia, paraphernalia. Even though we don't say the R, there's an R there. That's, again, that's a hard, I, I probably would have gotten this, <laughs> this word wrong if I took the test. So if, if you don't get 100% on this test, do not worry. Because even, like I said, most native English speakers would probably, probably struggle. At least get a few of these wrong. Okay, so the next word is Shih Tzu. Shih Tzu. Okay, this kind of dog, this breed of dog is, is a Shih Tzu. Okay, different kinds of dogs. We use the word breed right? A different breed. Or, you know, you have like, um, like Shih Tzus are one breed of dog. Uh, poodles are another breed. German Shepherds are another breed. Okay, so this is not a poodle. It's not a German Shepherd. It's a Shih Tzu. Okay, do you know how to spell it? It's a hard word. Okay, take a look at this. I, I, I don't know. Is this like Japanese or yeah, we've got a T, a Z, U? That, that doesn't look English. Okay, when I look at that, that looks like Japanese or Chinese or something and then look at this shi shi with a with an H I don't know it looks a bit weird I don't know if you know where these dogs come from if you know why this is a, I have no idea why this word is spelled like this right there's a lot of stuff I don't know a lot of information about words I don't know the history of word spelling and I don't know the history of English I'm not a, I'm not an English expert I'm just a simple I'm just a simple slave I'm your slave. I'm your I'm your teacher slave. <laughs> so hopefully you guys learned just a few words from watching my videos. Thank you so much for always watching my videos. Really appreciate it. Hopefully I can teach you some useful content as your slave. You're my master. Thank you so much for being a great master for me. Okay, so so shi tzu. Shi tzu. Now, <laughs> if you say it bad, it can almost sound like a bad word, right? And when you say it, it almost sounds like the T is over here. Shi tzu, right? considered a bad word by some English, some people. I have no idea why. It just means poop. It just means crap. Sometimes people are, make up these stupid, stupid ideas, stupid regulations. They say, oh, that word's bad. That word's good. That, it's just man-made rules. Personally, I don't really care. I don't really care about man-made rules. But, uh, you know, I still try to be respectful. Okay. So anyway, this is, um, this is two words and it's not a bad word. Okay. Shi tzu. Shih Tzu. Shih Tzu. So that's, uh, that's the breed of dog. Hey, that's it for today. I just uh, just want to ask you, uh, how many did you get right? How many did you get right? How many did you get wrong? Like I said, if you got a few wrong, don't worry about it. You know, I'll still take my hat off to you. If you, if you even got one or two right, that's awesome. So great job. Let me know um, if you want more spelling tests or if you hate spelling tests. But uh, I just thought it was a, it's been a long time, maybe a year, maybe two years since I made a, a spelling test. So I thought it's uh, a spelling test was in order. If something is in order, that means uh, it's time. It's time to have one, you know. It means that uh, you should probably, you should probably do it or it's about time that it happens. Anyway, so there's your lesson today. Hope you guys are having a great day wherever you are. I'm having a good day here. I'm going to go for a quick uh, jog after making this lesson. Come home and cook some healthy food because I've gotten a bit too fat. So I'm going to try to lose some weight. Thank you guys for all your support, for always smashing like, leaving your comments. Have a great day, and I'll see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV. Take care.